here on the left is a normal cervical spine, and this area here is the bony part of the cervical spine. Now, in between the bony parts here and here, there's a soft part that we refer to as the disc. So it's natural for all of us to progress from a normal spine when we are young to a degenerated spine. Um, not all degenerated spines are painful. However, when there's advanced degeneration, there can be pain. And you can see how this joint has lost its space and then they're spurring along the joint. Now there are other ways to have neck pain in which you can have a pinched nerve. Now if you have a herniated disc, what happens is the disc will slip posteriorly and what would happen at that point is that that disc will press on the nerve. Many times the neck pain that you have in conjunction with arm pain is truly coming from a herniated disc. So what non-surgical um, therapies do we have? Well, physical therapy is one modality, injections, anti-inflammatories, and I've added here relaxation exercises. What many people find is that they have a lot of tightness and pain in the shoulder blade muscles. And oftentimes the root of that is actually a stressful lifestyle or a stressful period within your life. And so relaxation exercises, relaxation techniques, and just the pure recognition that the stress is causing your pain will help you find ways to modify your lifestyle. This gentleman at this point, the kind of the center portion of his head is uh, in front or forward of his chest. You, just to have your head hanging in free space, you know, unsupported, means your neck muscles have to work so hard to keep your head up. It would actually be helpful for most of us if we would move to a point where we actually reclined and brought our computers and our TV screens up so that we could work in this fashion while resting our head. If you have no remission after a conservative course, then surgery can be considered as long as the reason that you have pain is something that surgery can treat. Uh, the gold standard treatment for many cervical or neck problems is a, is a one level fusion. With this particular operation, what happens is the disc space is taken out. And after that's taken out, a bone block is placed within that space and then a small plate or some device is used to stabilize those two vertebrae so that those two vertebrae go on and unite and become one unit. It's an operation that works great, but what has been observed is that the level above or below the fusion will then go on to break down and then that level may require surgical um, fusion. Uh, the disc replacement was uh, conceived in an effort to hopefully avoid uh, what we call adjacent segment degeneration or next level breakdown um, and to also maintain range of motion. Um, the fact of the matter when we look at the data that has come out and the uh, flat out uh, conclusion that disc replacements are better than fusions has not really borne out in the data as of yet. You're at the point where you say all non-surgical techniques have failed, um, should I have an artificial disc replacement? Um, number one, you have to have failed the conservative management that we spoke about. Um, single level disease from the third cervical level to the first thoracic level uh, would be appropriate for a cervical disc replacement. Radiculopathy, which is that arm pain that comes from your neck, or focal myelopathy, which is a balance problem, that's a good indication for um, a disc replacement. By and large, most people with neck pain get better. And also, most people with neck pain in a conjunction with a pinched nerve get better, nine out of 10 is actually the, the stat on that, uh, will get better without any surgery whatsoever.